Hey guys, and welcome to the newest episode of Blu-ray Tuesday with Terrell. All right guys, so before we get into this, I wanna talk about something that happened at work and it was so funny to me. I just thought it was kind of cute, kind of annoying and kind of like, oh my God. But today or, or this week, I had uh, a group of ladies. They all came into uh, one by one too, by the way. It was really weird. They came in after each other. They're all very similar, very similar height, very old in, in, in age. And they all came in um, to work and they needed help, you know, doing what they had to do, right? So they all come in and they all come in with the same fucking thing. They all got back from a trip. I guess all the girls, there's four of them. And I think they're the Asian Golden Girls. They were so funny. They all came in. They're all Filipino, I believe. And they all came in here with like the, the same like artwork and stuff. They all came from Dubai. So they had a good old time in Dubai. They had these bags and everything. They were so happy. And it was just so funny to me because they came in one by one. They didn't want to spend a lot of money, but they ended up spending a lot of money. But they didn't want to. They kept going, discount, discount, any more discount. And I was like, I am sorry, ma'am. I give you the best that I could give you. But, um... These ladies were so cute. They were a different name, Florinda or, Lin, or Letty. I forgot all the names, but they were so cute. But they all reminded me of the Golden Girls. You had the uh, the prissy ones. She's like, oh, my man, buy me everything. They were all chit-chatting in their language. Then you had the broke one because she was like, oh, I had no money, no money. And then they had the other one that was just goofy. It's like Shaden and the other girls, uh, Flor Florfina. She was just like, oh, Shady. These Filipinos, they be gossiping. They were talking down to each other, but they were giggling after hee hee hee. It was weird, but it was so cute that they were just loud, girl. Like I had a lot of people around me, other coworkers walking by like, oh, we're not going over there. Like they were going at it. And it was just really funny because they all were very, very, very much like the Golden Girls, but they were Asian and they were so cute. And they were like, oh, um, we're all gonna come back again all together. And I'm like, oh my God, but they're great. Super nice ladies. And I just wanted to call that up. They, like, they need a sitcom or something because they were all very Golden Girlish. But yeah, it was so cool they had their trip and they were talking about planning something else. But the broke one was just like, oh, I can't go. It was just really funny. And then they start going into the language. It was just uh, the transition. But yeah, I decided to throw that out there because it was funny and I, I can't believe it. And all my coworkers agree that they look like the fucking Golden Girls. And um, I don't know, it was fun. But besides that, we are back. It is Scream Week. I am super excited. I've been talking about Scream for a long time. But now, finally, Thursday, two days from uh, Blu-ray Tuesday, we get to see Scream 6. I'm hearing a lot of great things. I see these early reactions. They're not spoilers, thank God. I've been trying to avoid. And as of today, a lot of people are going to these premieres. So I'm trying not to get spoiled. But I'm seeing a lot of cool things. People are really excited about this movie. There's good things that I've heard. Um, stay after the credits. That's one that I heard, so make sure y'all doing that. But um, yeah, I'm super excited. And I'm going to be in my seat. I got my tickets for Thursday and Sunday. I got my two rounds. Round three, I do want to do it in 40X. So uh, yeah, fan event. I want my free poster. Um, Regal's doing collectible tickets. Um, AMC's doing a different collectible poster. And if you go on the weekend, there's a different poster at Cinemark. So it's crazy. They, they really doing that up for this promo for this film. So uh, I'm excited. Speaking of promo, though, I gotta get into something else. So over this past, like last weekend or so, um, there was there's this Ghostface website. Um, on Instagram, some of y'all sent me um, the links, right? So I said, like, what is this? So I think it's like, hello. If you type in hello Ghostface on Google, It'll bring up a website, like the first one, and uh, you 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 put you hit begin, and you put in someone's name or your own, and then put a phone number. And it takes a little bit of time, like, like like four to five minutes, and then they're gonna call that person. It's gonna be a New York number. You know, this movie takes place in New York, and um, it calls you. And each time it calls you, it's a different saying. <laughs> so I sent this to like everyone in the Overlook family. I sent it to my family, and some of them were not answering. But my sister, oh, this is so funny. So my sister actually answered it because I did it twice because I knew she wasn't going to answer at time one because you see this random number. Who answers random numbers, right? I called it again. She said, you know, let me just answer it. It was like 8 o'clock at night. She answers it. And it goes, hello, Taisha. And it said her name right. She, okay, let me, get, let me get to it. And it said her name. And then um, she had called me. Basically, I was just there. <laughs> She called me. She was like, Terrell, how's it going, bro? And I was like, oh, hey, how's it going? I tried to play it off. I'm not good at lying. I, I was like kind of smiling as I'm on the phone. I bet you she sensed it. And she's just like, uh, what's going on? What are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm just chilling, you know. And she was like, I got a call. And I was like, oh, you got a call. I was trying to act brand new. And then she's like, she's like, um, 
She's like, it was Scream. And I was like, Scream, what are you, what are you talking about? And she's like, you know what I'm talking about. Was it you? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. She said, bruh. And I, <laughs> I busted out laughing. I could not hold that in. And she said, that was you. And I was like, was it? I don't know what you're talking about. But basically she said that it called her. She said, he pronounced my name right. And I guess it said, um, it was nice to meet you. He was like, uh, basically telling her, oh, can you guess what door I'm at? And she got these, this window here, this side window. She has this other door here with the little windows in it. The ghost face could walk up like in that trailer for screams. She got that. And the other windows in the kitchen. Oh, I'll be scared too. She upstairs by herself and she got that call. She hung up. She's like, no, ma'am. I don't blame her. And then she calls back because she ain't stupid. She I'm calling. There's a number. Let me call it back. She calls it back and it says, this isn't how this works. I call you. And I'm like, oh my God. She was so spooked. She hung up the phone called me and I played it off. She was so mad. She was terrified. She's supposed to go downstairs to go do some stuff. She didn't do it. She called my mom and told on me. Girl, why you tell on me? She said, Terrell scared me. I she was I didn't realize she was that spooked. I thought it was a joke because I did tell her, oh hey, it was this. She really thought there was someone watching her. And when she called back, she was even more scared because she didn't hear the end of the call because she hung up the first time. The second time she didn't hear the end because when he said, this is how this works, she thought, she was like, was that you? She says, who else could it be? Could it be, could it be like she said our dad's name, but he not around, it couldn't be him. So she was scared, crazy. So I'm sorry, sis, but that was funny as fuck. I could not stop laughing. That was like everything, everything that the whole, week made my whole week. <laughs> she was so scared. Even she kept talking about it the next day. She was so mad. She hung up on me. She said I was annoying. It was just fun, you know, siblings. All right, but y'all do it. I want y'all to do it. Cause I know a couple of y'all try to send it to me and um, it is kind of, crazy because it does pronounce your name right like my name is not you know not everyone has this name or her name taisha that so it said the name right it was weird and then it, it does different stuff because i tried it out it'll say oh hey nice to meet you i bet you don't know where i'm at i'm here i'm watching you i can see you and all this kind of shit it's kind of terrifying and it's ghost face great promo all right moving on so there's a couple movies i watched i feel like i didn't watch enough but i did so i watched a few movies that i was late on so see this is for you so uh, I finally watched Project Wolf Hunting. Oh my God. So C reached out to me a while, a long time ago, told me I should watch this movie. I ain't watched it. Hit Blu-ray like two, three weeks ago, and I haven't watched it, but I, I watched it this weekend. And let's get into it. So it's about this, uh, I guess these people attack the Philippines and there's these like criminals there and they're trying to ship them to Korea. So they're on this ship. So it's like two hours. It's kind of long. You know, Asians are like long movies, but uh, they uh, basically, it, okay. So the movie, that's the premise. So there's a bunch of criminals on this damn ship, but then there's a super soldier or some shit on the ship too. Very nemesis from Resident Evil because when he walks, it goes shoop, shoop, shoop. Even when he's walking on metal, I'm like, why is he making this sound? Anyways, the movie's brutal as but this movie is crazy and I, I loved it. So let me tell you, it's kind of some slow parts. It, it, it's uh, on the Blu-ray, you can watch the dub version, but I, I had to, I read the subtitles because I feel like I would focus more on this movie. So I did watch it with subtitles. But basically this movie uh, has these characters and there's so much blood in this movie. Like so much blood, so much gore, blood splattering everywhere. They had a budget of blood. They had a bucket of blood, I'm sure. Probably had gallons of blood that rolled up to this, the shooting of this film. But basically, there's these criminals and then there's these other people and basically they're all killing each other trying to escape. But once they think that, oh, these guys are bad, there's an even super soldier that's like, like, a, like a fucking, I don't know, like, like Iron Man or something. He's shoot, 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 walking through like a fucking tyrant and he's just busting through people and like one guy got hungry and he bit a guy's ear off. It was really crazy. Lots of blood, lots of guts, lots of slicing and dicing, arms and limbs getting ripped off. It's a very gory movie, probably the goriest movie I've seen. Like, these people are crazy. Asians, they know how to make gory shit. Have y'all seen the sadness? They just love freaky shit and love fucking. Like, what, you know, crazy. Anyway, so, Project Wolf Hunting. Watch that movie, y'all. I want to know what y'all think, because that movie's crazy. Uh, pretty solid film. I enjoyed it. Um, um, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know what I was expecting for this. I didn't know. It was, it was more of like a thrill, like a crime heist type of thing. But then it turns horror toward the end with all the blood guts and then that really super villain, like super tyrant from Resident Evil, I feel like. But he's a person. It was pretty crazy. I liked it. Check that one out. Thanks, C, for the re uh, recommendation. But yeah, check it out. It's on Blu-ray from Well Go USA. And um, yeah, I would definitely add that to your collection. Over the past couple weeks, I feel like every movie I'm watching has to do with a pregnant woman or a fucking baby, <laughs> right? So this next movie I want to get into, it does drop uh, on VOD uh, March 10th. So screen day. 
So if once you go see Scream, go home and watch this movie because it's pretty solid. I liked it. So mind you, the movie's called Unwelcome and it's about the, this couple who moves to Ireland and there's some fucking goblins or uh, people, they call them leprechauns, but y'all gotta see it. I'm not gonna spoil this too much, but uh, I want y'all to see it. So it's almost kind of a cool movie to watch this March, you know, for St. Patty's Day and all that good stuff. Get you an Irish car bomb, some whiskey, Irish whiskey, and, and enjoy. So there's these little goblins, which is my favorite part of the movie. They're so cute and weird and creepy all at the same time, and I love it. It's called Unwelcome. So it stars, uh, I don't know what fucking her name is. Anyways, it's a woman and a man. Basically opens up with them like fucking and wanting to like have a baby, right? So they've been trying to have this kid and there's a goofy guy talking about, ooh, my sperm made it. They realize they're pregnant. He's all like doing, all, he's like a nerd. He's dorky as fuck in this movie, I'm so sorry. Anyways, and then the girl's all happy. So he goes to go get some, they live like in the projects or something. So he goes to go get a bottle of champagne. Not alcoholic champagne, non alcoholic because the bitch pregnant, right? So he goes to go get a bottle and he runs into three thugs. Like uh, Thugs R Us, they were just up there. Like, they were like weenie like Disney thugs though. They didn't seem that harmless. But anyway, so they go to get these thugs and these thugs are like, like trying to rough him up. Like, why are you fucking with this little white boy? Let him go get his little um, champagne. So he walks by, he ignores it, which is fine, you know, get past these weirdos. And then he pays for his shit. He's trying to walk back home. And then they want to go attack him. And, he, and then he actually wanted to boss up. Mr. Dorkface, he bossed up on the guys, and then they did not take a liking to this. So basically, those three thugs break into their home and whoop their ass. They, he, he fucked that white boy up, and it made me, oh God, I was on the edge of my seat because they got the pregnant girl and kicked her in her stomach. So I was like, is this bitch gonna lose her baby? So. That's what happened, so he now he feels super emasculated, and he's like, I couldn't protect my wife, so they have to move because his auntie dies. And he's very happy about this, by the way. He, it's a reference, he says it in there. And then his girl is just like, why are you so happy that your aunt died? But he's happy he got a new home in Ireland. So that's where all the, uh, the trouble starts. They move to Ireland, and things keep moving. There's something in the woods. The townspeople are weird as fuck. There's this like, like hillbilly-ass family with a guy who I think fucks his daughter, and then he hates he hates his son. His son is a big fat fuck. He really big and he, he's crazy. If y'all seen Yule Log, he's like that nasty fat dude. Or if y'all saw a leprechaun, the first one, he looks similar to that, but uglier. But I liked him, he was nice. He had Down syndrome or something too. But anyways, but uh, yeah. So you have the big guy and then he get beat. The old daddy be beating this man. So basically uh, the story is these hillbillies and there's some, some leprechauns and basically they need a sacrifice. So mind you, this girl is pregnant. Her baby is just showing. So they need a baby. So these goblins want a baby and they got this queen. Anyway, so there's this, this story that uh, this woman had to give up her baby or her baby was taken um, into the forest and she's like the new queen or something. So I'm not gonna spoil any further, but basically this movie is about these two people going up against these hillbilly people that gets good, let me tell you, and then the goblins. So there's the goblins that come out. So uh, after March 10th, I'm gonna talk about this again because I really do wanna spoil this movie. But basically, um, yeah, the goblins come, when that comes, that gives me everything, let me tell you. But the movie, it gets me kinda slow, I'm gonna tell y'all, so don't get mad at me if y'all don't like it. It's kinda slow, but for me, I loved it, the payoff, just stick with it, y'all. Stick with this movie, it is great, I had a lot of fun, and it's great for this holiday time, um, St. Patty's, uh, lots of blood, again, like Project Wolf Hunting, um, it's, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna spoil it. But yeah, check it out, Unwelcome. It's on um, VOD March 10th. All right, so after Unwelcome, I did have a double feature kind of, and they kind of played well, sort of. You had little leprechauns, or, or sorry, goblins, and you had a pregnant woman. The next movie, more kids. So this one dropped in January, and I didn't. I kept meaning to watch it, but I finally got to it, and it's called There's Something Wrong With The Children. More kids, y'all. So mind you, the last movie I watched, she was pregnant trying to protect her baby. This movie, I wanted to kill the kids because these kids was annoying as fuck. Like, fuck them kids. Very strays and very, um, the reading. But no, this movie's called There's Something Wrong With The Children, and there sure was. So, it's about two couples. It's uh, one couple that has two kids, and the other couple who are talking about having kids, but they ain't ready for them, right? So, uh, they all get together, and they're, they're at a cabin. So, it's four friends, and they have two kids. The kids run around doing their own thing. I didn't get it, because these, these, all these couples, they were just drinking the whole time, like having beers, having, the two girls are having girl talks and wine, one girl's telling her uh, her girl, her good Judy, like, oh yeah, me and my man had a foursome. Well, it was kind of a threesome because I was fucking another man and he was watching. You know, they get kinky, they white people. And I guess 
they have some struggles in their relationship because he, uh, after, ever since he, he, she got freshly fucked by another man, he ain't touched her since. So there's a big, there's some disconnect there between these characters, right? But she didn't tell him. She just said she faked the orgasm. But she said that, that or was the best orgasm of her life. But she didn't want to tell her man. This comes up later because the, he told the girl. Anyways, we don't get to it. But there's something wrong with the children. They all drink it, talking, spilling their secrets. And then the two dads talk, or the two guys are talking or whatever about their lives and how, oh, you should have kids. Da, 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 da. You're great with my kids. You should have kids too. And he's like, oh, I want to. But, but basically, he's, like, he's like, kind of like a weenie too because his girl makes more money, I guess. And she has like a job and he's like trying to find something. I don't know. But basically, there's the two, two groups. And they all have that all comes into fruition when um, uh, the the girl says, "Oh hey, how about you? Uh, you take your man since he ain't touched you. How about y'all have a time away? Let me and him practice being parents. So let's watch the kids, right? Mind you, they're like, okay, that's a good idea. So they leave. But mind you, before all this happened, they went into the woods. There's this cave. In this cave, there's this green light, and uh, the two kids are drawn to this light. And uh, the parents snatched him up because, like, girl, why are you going to the hole? Like, why do you want to run up the stupid kids? Mind you, the kids running around playing and, and, and getting into mischief the whole movie, being annoying. And then uh, they, when they get back, when the, uh, the family goes away to go have their little sexy time, uh, the, the friends watch the kids. And they all playing around. The kids kept saying, like, oh, we got to go to this, the woods. Let's go to the woods. They're trying to be manipulative to each each of the uh, characters like, oh, you all got to take us. They said no. They didn't. They put their foot down. They're getting good parents, right? And um, when they go to sleep, they wake up. The kids is gone. And um, basically, the, 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 the dude, he goes to the cave. He sees them. They jump into the hole. And he's scared because he's like, oh, he's supposed to be watching these kids. And they dead, right? He comes back. And the kids is at the house. And they're playing with the girl. With the, the, I like the girl, the, the, his, his girlfriend. And then the, the family comes. Everybody seems fine. But he's in like, what the hell just happened? So the movie plays out with the kids not being what they are anymore because like, apparently they might have died in that hole, but now they're different and they're more mischievous. They're more trying to like poison the other characters and they're trying to take them back to the hole so they can kill them. There's bugs going around. I don't know if the bugs were involved. I think they were, the bugs was a big thing. They turned into bugs. I don't know. I was spoiling this kind of. But yeah, so y'all check this out. It came out in January, so most of y'all probably already seen this. I was into it. I was reading the reviews on Letterboxd. A lot of people did not like this movie. I liked it because the girl... Um, when they found out that the kids went back to the, the there and the, the mom and dad was like, oh, why weren't you watching our kids? They did a good job watching them kids, except, I don't know, I guess in the middle of them sleeping, they just left. But anyways, uh, they had a big fight, and that's when the old girlfriend just threw it in their face, like, oh, well, you, you had a foursome, da 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 da, da. And that, all of them, they got all mad at each other, and they all split up, and that was a bad thing, because they all started dying one by one. But ain't that crazy? So these kids were being a hell of annoying. Nobody believes anybody. Everyone thinks each other are lying until they start dying. And that's also, y'all stupid. These kids, you can see how evil these kids was being. But uh, I don't know. I was just annoyed. Those two characters, the kids are just annoying. I do like the main girl who ended up being the quote unquote final girl, kind of sort of. I'm not going to spoil the ending. But uh, yeah, so basically it's about one of those movies where they go to this cabin, there's something in the woods, and it comes back, and these kids are just evil. And uh, I bet you it's better than Children of the Corn. I've seen a lot of y'all saw that remake, and y'all did not have good things to say. I heard there was a corn monster with a frosted snowman nose as a carrot. I'm like, what in the world? I do want to watch that, but I heard terrible things. Like, terrible things. So there's a lot of children movies out there. Children scare me. And um, this one's, that's your list, y'all. All right. Moving on. All right, guys, so before we get into the Blu-rays of the week, I did want to talk about a movie that is coming out at the end of the month, March 31st, called Malum. So Malum is one that is looks super creepy. The trailer dropped, and I said, this looks familiar. And I realized the director of that film did a movie in 2014 called The Last Shift. I remember that movie being spooky as fuck, scary, creepy, and very effective. Well, I looked it up. He directed that movie, too, and he wrote it. So he's remaking his own movie as Malum. And that drops March 31st. So I guess he wanted to update it. I Actually, um, last Drag Party Friday, we all hang out with Drag Race. We watched a movie. We picked The Last Shift so I could refresh our memory. And that movie is still effective to this day. That movie is creepy as fuck. Check it out. It's great. Um, I remember posting about it. And um, I tagged the director, and that was a mistake, because I talked about, like, oh, I don't know why he's making his own movie. And he actually messaged me saying, oh, well, I think we did a good job. And I was like, oh, fuck, I hope he didn't take offense to that. But um, check it out. Last Shift, please watch this movie, because the movie is so good. And um, he's remaking it, so you can kind of compare. Hopefully, it's probably going to be a bit more, I don't know, I don't know he's probably going to change some things. But there's a bigger budget, so maybe it'll be great. 
So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So the last shift, if you haven't seen it, check that out in Malum's uh, Hitting Theaters this month. All right, guys, so before we get into the Blu-rays, real quick, I have another thing I want to talk about, because we're going to have a little giveaway. So, Blood and Banter. I don't know if you guys remember, but um, a few episodes ago, we did talk about Blood and Banter. It's now officially released, and at Murder Memes, you can check out Murder Memes on Instagram. Also, um, he has a website, so bloodandbanter.com. You guys can get your own deck. So, we're going to open one up, and we're going to just try it out so I can give you guys a little taste. So, it comes with 50 cards. Great conversation cards, by the way. Y'all, If y'all with your friends, like camping, or if y'all like, you know, hanging out, having some drinks, and just want to say, let's start some conversations, have some fun. Um, this is great for that. Maybe for y'all blue tubers out there, we do the streams all the time. This would be a good thing to do. You could like get a deck of these cards and then stream and then ask the chat, hey, some of these questions. It'll be fun. I'll get the conversation going, and I'll get to see how people feel about certain things. Um, so we're going to try one. I'm just going to pick a random card and give y'all a little taste. So, these are really nice cards. They feel nice. Uh, they're $19.99 on uh, bloodedbanter.com. So, go get you a copy. And the first one is, I'm going to uh, do this question. It says, what do you do if you think your house is haunted? So, I want to know the chat. So, while this is live or in the comments, I want to know. Answer this question. What do you do if your house is haunted? Me, bitch, I'm out. I'm leaving. I'm scared. I, uh, uh, if it's a friendly ghost, maybe that's fine. Maybe it might make my coffee in the morning. That might be great. Uh, but haunted. Like, like, I've seen the conjuring in Insidious. That shit's not cute. Paranormal activity. No, ma'am. Mm -mm, the shit moving. I'm moving. They're pulling me out the bed. No. So I don't like that. That's scary. But what would y'all do? What would you do in the chat, in the comments? I'll give y'all some time. What would y'all do if y'all house was haunted? Ain't that crazy? I don't know. I'll be gone, though. That's too scary. I'm going to try another one, another one. So, describe the perfect horror movie night in. Oh, that sounds fun. Perfect movie night in. I will say, y'all answer in the comments, what's the perfect the perfect horror movie night in? I like this, because this is my perfect time of day. Like, I, uh, what do you want to do? What do you do for fun? It'll be this. So, I will say the scene. I'll set the scene. I want it to be raining and storming like it had recently. And, um... I will say, raining, stormy, having some good food, some pizza or some fried chicken wings. <laughs> That'd be great. And uh, put on a good movie, have a blanket, because it'll be nice and cold and cozy. And that's perfect for me. Top it off with a drink. That's great. And just watch horror movies. Preferably with friends, it'd be great. But uh, the perfect horror night, movie night in is that, that for me. But what do y'all think? What's the perfect movie horror night in for y'all? I like this. So this game is fun. There's a lot of different stuff. Um, last episode that I did this, there was a question talking about, oh, what would you do? Would you rather pull your teeth out one by one? Or would you want to like cut off your hand? And I think I answered, I would pull my teeth out, but then I realized that's mm, that's going to hurt. One by one, that's not cute. I might have to cut off my hand and get me a prosthetic. Uh, call me this fisherman for my notes you did last summer because uh -uh, I ain't going to be doing that. That's going to hurt. But what would y'all do? I don't know. But yeah, blood and banter. So this is, this is fun. So I think this would be great. But I want to give y'all an opportunity for winning something. All y'all have to do is um, once this episode drops, there's gonna be a giveaway that's gonna start. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is follow me at Terrell88 and Murder Memes, the creator of Blood and Banter. All you have to do is answer one question. What do you do if your house is haunted? And then just tag a friend to join in on the fun. So when this episode drops this Thursday, stay tuned because you're gonna get another post. And when that post drops, make sure y'all join. If you share it to your stories, you get a bonus point. And we're going to randomly pick the winner, and you guys are going to receive your own deck of blood, blood and banter. It'll be fun. So join the fun. I can't wait to see what you guys put. I want to know what y'all would do if your house is haunted, because that's creepy. I'll be scared as hell, and I'll be gone. I'll have to find, you know, evict me. But yeah, let me know what y'all think. All right, guys, so next up, we're going to get into some Blu-rays. So the first Blu-ray I picked up this week is Betwixt. So... This movie was released a few years ago. I don't remember liking it at all. But this is only $10, and it's the re... I guess the director did. It's a director cut, but it's called the authentic cut. So I guess it's a different version of the movie. If you guys remember, your horror fans out there, Twix came out. I don't remember liking it. I don't really remember this movie. But uh, it has Val Kilmer, I guess, and, and uh, Ellie Fanning. She's pretty good. But uh, I just picked this up. It was $10. Uh, I might revisit it, because I don't remember it originally. And, yeah, I don't know. Francis Ford Coppola is the director of this. So, um, if y'all are into that, this did drop last week, and I finally received it. And, yeah. All right. Next up is one I talked about last week. There's so many editions of this movie, and I went with the slipcover. I really like this, this cover, where it has the eye and he had a leather face in it. 
This is the 4K Ultra HD um, uh, HDR enhanced 4K edition. So I love this. So the steelbook is really nice too. The cover that's on the steelbook is actually on the inside of this under the slip, which I like. Well, I like when the slip cover and the inside artwork is a little bit different. And I love this movie. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is great. The video game is coming out this year, which I'm excited to play. Very Dead by Daylight like. So um, I'm excited to go up against the Sawyer family. This movie's great. It's creepy when I was a kid. Leatherface creeped the fuck out of me. And uh, yeah, so I'm sure a lot of the horror fans picked this up and I'm excited to own this. All right, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. All right, guys, a couple episodes ago, I talked about Mark Patton a lot in the movie Swallowed. And I hella liked that movie. He did a great job. He deserves his flowers. And I realized I didn't own his documentary, Scream Queen. Um, and I love this. Vinegar Syndrome put this out. Amazing slipcover. Look at this. It's uh, the claws are out. So it has like the claws here from uh, Mark Patton. He's known from A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. And he put together this, this documentary about his time on the film, how uh, the director wrote the film and like he knew he was gay. And I guess that movie is like a gay character. If you watch the movie, it has a lot of gay undertones. It's the gayest horror film ever. And uh, he confronts him in this and it is great. Y'all gotta watch it just for that scene alone. The claws will definitely out. But yeah, Scream Queen, My Nightmare on Elm Street. Struggles that he went through growing up during the movie. It's great. I like this documentary a lot. Here's the inside here. It has reversible cover art. Um, I don't know. I really like this. I have it on DVD when he first did the Kickstarter, and I think I have a signed copy. So um, I would just wanted to upgrade it because, like, you know what? This Blu-ray is awesome. Look at that. I love this so much, and I love the little claws here on the um, on the slip cover. But yeah, great documentary. Vinegar Syndrome put this out. It's uh, if you want it with the slip cover, y'all, I would order it from them only because it's limited to them and it's exclusive to Vinegar Syndrome, and they're not. They don't have. Once these are out, you're not going to get them again. So if y'all like this, check this out. Um, I highly recommend it. Mark Patton is awesome. So one of my first horror films I ever watched too, A Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two. So I had to own that. I love the slipcover. All right, moving on. This is one that, you know, I'm getting to the point like, why am I buying these? But this is the DC Legion of the Superheroes. I own all the DC animated films ever since they first came out, I think around 2007. And I loved watching these. The last few that I got, I have not watched, but I like to get them for the completest purposes because I do own them all. And I will say I do like the DC animated films more so than the live action shit, because that's a disaster. Like they put out all these live action movies, Justice League, Wonder Woman, and then they fired all of them and they were starting over. Like, what are y'all doing? Y'all some messy boots. So now the Shazam's coming out with little to no promo. And a lot of people are saying they're not even gonna watch it because they're refocusing or re repositioning these DC films. And then the, they canceled Batgirl that I was looking forward to, but they're coming out with The Flash. And then that guy was all in and out of jail, had all this shit, but his shit didn't get canceled, but they, they putting him up. I don't know, there's a whole thing I could talk about with that, but I don't know, I'm only, I only, I'm only interested in that because Michael Keaton is back as Batman. Arguably my favorite, the best Batman, but my favorite. Batman Returns, right? I love that movie. Like Michelle Pfeiffer, Danny DeVito, great film. But, uh, yeah, DC UMS. But yeah, I picked this up, I got the 4K edition, and yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it eventually, maybe, with some cereal, like, you know, recreate my childhood, waking up watching cartoons with a bowl of cereal. I don't know. All right, last one I picked up this week is, all right, I don't know if y'all know, if y'all scrolling through Facebook, Instagram, maybe even Twitter, this movie, Kill Her Goats, has been ultimate, it's the ultimate promo. Like every, I, I, don't, I haven't even heard about this movie. I don't think anyone's seen it. I don't think you could actually watch it on video on demand quite yet. But this movie has been promoted to hell. Like every ad is this movie. It stars Kane Hodder, I think, as the goat killer. And then some porn star women. That's why, hence the naked woman. And on the back, her titties out. So basically, it's about these porn star ladies and this goat. I don't know much about this. I don't care because that sounds awesome to me. And it's a lot of practical effects. You're not going to see no CGI. It ain't no mean one. It ain't no uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. But I'm so here. It says no body is safe. But they split up the no and the body because, you know, there's probably some sexual porn shit in this. But who knows? I got the Steelbook Edition. Um... I'm sure you can find this online. If you're scrolling through Instagram, you've probably seen the link. But this is great. It's heavy. I haven't opened it yet. But this is the 4K edition. Uh, I don't remember how much this was. I think it was like $24 to $26. And the regular Blu-ray with the slip is on sale for $14.99. And they also have a bundle edition where you get the 4K steelbook and a t-shirt. And they actually sign the steelbook, which is awesome. I didn't get the signed version, 
But I, he did sign, um, the director did sign this, this little paper that came with it. It says, proudly serving Cape Cod since 1981. Um, basically, you're holding a copy of his film, he says. The coolest thing in the world to me, and I am truly grateful. I get it. You put all your hard work into making a movie. I get it. I support my indie horror. I love horror. Um, yeah, Kill Her Goats. I'm super excited for it. This is his signature, so you'll probably get that little card. And then they give you a little coupon and a code to get 10% off your next order. So if you order, oh, that's the t-shirt right there. So it has the t-shirt and the Blu-ray right there, if y'all see that there. Yeah, it's cool. I don't know, I like the little promo they put into it. They really want people to buy this. People like me who love horror, like slashers, they're probably gonna definitely get this. It says right here in bold letters too, right under here, no CGI. Did y'all see that? No CGI, all practical effects. That's, that's a huge plus, y'all. I'm super excited to watch this. I don't know anything about it and um, has bonus features and everything. Has stickers, it says inside, and there's numbered four by five cards. Oh my God, this is cool. So yeah, it has collectibles inside too. That's probably why it's so heavy. So this is a solid addition. So guys, if you're into that and you want to collect it, I'd highly recommend picking that up. But yeah, so I didn't pick up anything this week that was new that dropped this week, but Christmas Bloody Christmas did drop on Blu-ray. Isn't that great? It's a Shutter exclusive. It has a really cool uh, flashy slip cover, but um, there's no 4K. But if you do want the 4K edition, check out dialbleak.com. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but they have some copies. It's from Germany. But they, when I looked it up today, they had like five copies left. I do want to get one. It's like 30, 40, like 40 bucks at $36.99. And you get the media book version of Christmas Bloody Christmas in 4K. And I, I ordered the regular one, which is going to arrive tomorrow. But now I'm like, fuck, I should have got the media book. I kind of want that 4K one. And um, so, yeah, if you're all interested in that, check that out. Otherwise, you can get it on Amazon Germany. Um, also that dropped today was Fear. Um, I already own this Blu-ray. I think they're re-releasing the same Blu-ray, but uh, Fear from Mill Creek comes with the cool cassette um, slipcover. If y'all remember those Blu-ray collectors out there know, they had that cool cassette slipcover over their movies. But Fear is a solid one for me. Alyssa Milano, Mark Wahlberg, Reese Witherspoon. I watched the movie a lot as a kid, love it. So I might double dip, it's only $9.99 on Amazon and Best Buy. So uh, yeah, check that out there. Um, a lot of re-releases dropped too, like Rocky II, Steelbook, and all this kind of stuff in 4K. Uh, I do want to see Creed. If y'all seen Creed, let me know, because I hella want to watch that. Let me know, is it good? Should I wait? I need to revisit part two, because I don't remember. But, yeah, that's a lot. But this week is the week of Scream. So next time y'all see me, we're going to be talking Scream 6. So make sure y'all get your tickets and go watch it. Um, so it's going to be a blast. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Oh! <laughs>